Emma, welcome to the Fashion Business Mindset Podcast. Hi, Liz. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Now, Emma, before we dive into all things India sourcing, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your brand, Naughty? Sure. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm the owner and founder of a brand called Nordic. Uh, we've been operating and uh, delivering lifestyle clothing for 18 years in the Australian market and Australian New Zealand market. And uh, we have recently started exporting to the US. It's a fun, um, adventurous, colourful a brand that has a beautiful loyal following which uh, we have a lovely online community I'm the creative director I spend a lot of time uh, looking for inspiration uh, in India which we'll get to and then also I travel abroad and uh, look at other cultures as well I'm pretty sure all of our listeners are envious right now on the life that you are living <laughs> Emma and the business that you have but Emma, with 18 years of experience sourcing from India, and I'm sure it's even more than 35 visits to the country right now, what makes yeah. India so special as a sourcing destination? Oh, I mean, Liz, I, you know, you've heard me talk about this many times and I, I could be, I'll put my hand up to be the ambassador for India. But if we get down to it, I have, um, it's been a, a, a very creative 18 years as well. There hasn't been, it's not been a straight line. It's been very up and down. I came to, I was forced to come to India for the first time after four years of business, turned up in Delhi with a, a suitcase full of ideas and uh, knew two people and uh, started uh, pounding the pavement from that day. So I feel India is, uh, it, it's just in my world, it's a gift that keeps on giving because of its uniqueness. And I have seen a lot of um, countries and I've seen a lot of different craftsmanships, but here it is just a pool. It's a deep pool of techniques, cultures. Even when you travel one hour, you see completely different fabrics. It's unique. It has a lot of color. The color palette is huge. Uh, the cotton is divine. and what I love about it, it's got the real people. So as everything is becoming robotic online, India still has this huge population that are happy to uh, keep, you know, connecting, keep servicing. So for me, uh, being in a creative role, I need a lot of stimulation. I need rest, but I also need a lot of stimulation and that's what I get here. So, well, you're certainly in the right place if you need a lot of stimulation. I can definitely <laughs> vouch for that, everyone. So, Emma, you spend several months of the year now living in India. So could you yes. share why being based there has been so beneficial to your business and for launching the sourcing experience trips? I think uh, for me, after doing uh, so many trips a year and it was tiring, so when I found the source, and for me, it is about the real connection and the real hands-on. So all of our designs are done digitally. All our prints are unique. All of our uh, styling is unique. It's all digitized. But when it comes to actually putting the collection together, I like to be here. So now that we've gone online and everything has sped up, it's important that I'm here face-to-face. -face. Now, India is a face-to-face -face business community. They are very much about sitting down together and talking things through. Uh, they will say yes to everything. So then it's also important that you can also filter when it feels like a stretch or when it feels like, yes, they're really on board. I have to do a collection every month now and it's important that we evolve and it's moving so fast that being here gives me that um, hands-on, agile feel. And it takes a lot of pressure off. Travelling back and forth after all those years was starting to become a little bit burdensome. But now, you know, family situations and work situations change. The world has changed. And I've been able to take this opportunity uh, to set up a small base. Yeah, amazing. And I think it's important for our listeners to be aware that you are sourcing exclusively out of India. So you're not a business that has part of your sourcing in China or Indonesia and India is only a small part of it. It's absolutely every piece of clothing um, or any piece of product that you're uh, ranging under your brand. 
Correct. Yeah. I, I and and I do go to other areas around this region and I see other things, but then I will interpret it and use that as inspiration for something that I will always do here. I yeah. find just it's just the way I've set it up and it's the way I like to do business. Mm. And I think it's one of the very important reasons to have someone on the ground in India that you can trust that has all of the experience that you can bring to the table through that hands-on nurturing and development of your supply chain over a very long period of time. It just doesn't happen overnight, does it, Emma? It doesn't, Mm -hmm. no. And it has taken years to build up and it it has been 18 years and I have been building it up step by step and also facing challenges with them because that will happen. And when challenges happen, you want to have that reliable relationship so that you can lean on them and they can lean on you. It's never, it's not as, it's not a smooth cookie cutter uh, production line always. There's always environmental factors. There's always global factors. So having such a good relationship with our supply chain has been very good to get us through a lot of things over the past Yeah, relationships are everything. Relationships and obviously, you know, proof of concept with your amazing supply chain partners delivering and delivering consistently at a very high standard. So let's talk about the trip. I'm sure everyone's dying to hear about it. Um, So the India sourcing experience trip, this one is planned for September 2023. The last one was in September 2022. But I thought we'd just share with our listeners the inspiration behind the trip. So you and I met at a trade show in Melbourne in 2019. So not too many years ago now. But we had something in common. And for me, at my end, being a fashion business consultant and being in the industry for 25 years, I've got to say, there's almost, it doesn't, a day doesn't go by where someone doesn't ask me, hey, can you help me find a manufacturer? So I've got this consistent stream of inquiries. Can you help me with supply chain? And whether that's someone at the startup stage or someone who's been in business for 30 years, it's right across the industry. So I had a passion to find a solution, a supply chain partner solution that was really built around people that I could trust and that I knew had long-term relationships. Your passion, Emma, what was your passion around starting these trips? My passion was connecting businesses to India after doing it for so many years. And when I saw the variety, the accessibility, uh, the keenness, the hardworking part of India, and I'm a tip of the iceberg. I mean, there is so much different fabric varieties that you can get here. And it was something that we were happy to start opening the door for people that were searching for that. And yeah. it is important, especially in fashion, as we know, it, it evolves so quickly and your fabrics are vital and the production line is vital and um, the, sort of the evolution of fabrics is also changing. So we, I think, been able to join our two resources is it's like a team that we couldn't even put the number of people on it's just our years of experience and all the work that we've done on both sides of it uh that we came together and it it's a it's a great combination yeah. currently great combination I think there's a lot the world is looking on India a lot now and literally the last year that I have spent here it is changing so far so they're prepping for a, a lot of business in flux and I think yeah we, we're in a good position to be able to offer that now to Australian Australian businesses fashion businesses yeah I, I agree and you call India the center of the universe and <laughs> I had a front row seat to that last September it certainly felt like the center of the universe when you're there on the ground visiting multiple cities multiple artisans high-end production, you know, facilities and everything in between. So you and I had the pleasure of hosting eight fashion brands last year through India. We went to Mumbai, Jaipur and New Delhi. And now we're here today, very excited to invite our new crew to join you in India in September. I'll be assisting with the pre-trip planning post-trip planning, but you'll be the host on the ground throughout this amazing five-day experience. 
So yes. let's dive into that, Emma. Let's share with our listeners, what is this five-day experience going to look like? There's been a little bit of an adjustment to the trip. There's going to be a lot more business on this trip. We're very, very focused on really supporting, you know, that relationship between India and the Australian fashion industry. And we know that time is of the essence when you're on the ground in India. There's a lot to cover in a short period of time. But what does the five days look like in September 2023? So initially we were trying to, I think on our last trip, it was, it was a bit of a gold mine, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> so it was a gold yeah. mine. We were covering a lot of boxes there with uh, with the with the supply chain, with uh, food, entertainment, and looking at the culture. Now we have uh, we're narrowing it down. We understand that the value that you're going to get out of this is fast tracking. So when you initially arrive and you know not many people or they're strangers, but they will be your best friends, we will be avoiding all of that. We'll be deep diving into the relationships that I have built up over time here, specifically in Delhi and Jaipur. Uh, we can we may or may not visit Mumbai, but currently it is all focused on Delhi. Uh, the time that will be spent will be with two suppliers that are international suppliers and production houses with uh, up to 500 stitching machines or less. They're open to small volumes and to larger volumes. They're used to doing high end down to uh, more sort of children's wear or swimwear, a big variety. And that's what we thought was the most beneficial to be able to come in and hit the ground running. Uh, so the prep work that will be done by myself will be introducing um, the brands and the ideas and the mood boards and the prep work so that when you arrive, we will already have some fabrics to show you. Uh, you'll be meeting the team and we'll be spending two days with one supplier and then two days with the next supplier and then regrouping on the fifth day. So it's literally fast tracking one full collection and at the end of those five days you would have samples ready to go tick the box approved now you're into sample production line mm, amazing now, just to yeah. just to clarify so category so the main category is women's wear that these manufacturers are specializing All, in absolutely so the bowl 80 percent is women's wear 100 yeah yeah that's, and then you mentioned perfect. children's wear and children's the wear. other category Swim. Okay. Swim, swim lifestyle and yoga. So they have all different fabrics. So the prior to the trip, I would be asking questions of what type of fabrics you're looking for so that in the showrooms there would be uh, swatches of all those fabrics, all the variety that we can get mm -hmm. and the different grades. And yeah. then we would start working on some mood boards so that when you arrive there'll be colour schemes and so forth if you needed swatches and stuff printed to to touch and feel so it, it's literally hit the ground running and uh fast tracking so there's no distractions it's very focused yeah. and at the end we have a sample plan ready to go which is the main that's where we make our money on our samples and on our collections yeah. and um, a lot of the thought can be taken out prior to the trip yeah, that's right. As you said, you know, thinking about the return on investment, you know, where does where does a business make its money? Well, it is fast tracking, getting to that sampling stage as efficiently as possible, being able to yeah. validate that supply chain partner and go straight into production. And I right. think, you know, you and I sitting here today, we look back at the brands that you know, travelled with us last year and they are already doing business. They were actually doing business yep. with these suppliers within a month of visiting India. So they already had their samples in motion while they were on the ground on the trip with us. And yep. then samples back, everything went quite smoothly and they were straight into production. So some of those brands have already taken delivery, if not several deliveries um, from yep. these manufacturers. So it's a proven model. Uh, and I think that's the benefit here. This is um, this is actually something we've already been through before. And of course, the more that you know, we go through this process and fine tune the process, the more efficient it's going to become. 
And what I love is about the prep work. And I think that's the point of difference here. You and I will be supporting those who will be going on this trip to prepare in advance so that once they arrive in India, things are already in motion and they're able to fast track their bulk production should they decide to proceed um, and trade with you know, these makers, and we're pretty sure that they're going to because um, these yeah. relationships that you've built up over many years are absolute gold. So let's maybe recap. So from where I stand and, you know, looking at what happened last year, Emma, it's a door-opening experience. I think that yeah. goes without saying. So yeah. the sourcing connections, just the connections on the ground in general, And also, I think, you know, the observation that anyone on this trip will make in regards to how to do business in India, because they're going to be watching you in action for a start with your wealth of experience, but you're also there to guide and mentor each of the trip attendees. Yeah. Um, Money can't buy experiences. What you'll see on the ground in India will be forever embedded in your beautiful mind because you won't be forgetting it in a hurry. Um, You'll be stretched from a growth perspective, whether it's business or personal growth. But the camaraderie that comes out of these trips is very, very unique, isn't it, Emma? It is. And I mean, we, you know, we were um, keeping the girls on track because there is so (laughs) distractions here and that's fun as well so there was a lot of group bonding outside of the days when we were in the uh showrooms and working uh they're full days and i mean india is a 24 7 country so even after hours uh, you're still getting inspiration and there's so many night markets that we can go to and fun walking the street so it's it is um difficult to put into words because it's such a visual country Mm. and yes i will be here hold hand holding and i've done it now with a variety of people and very much given them the five-star service of this is how you can navigate through and not be a tourist and not be an overwhelmed business owner. Mm -hmm. And there's a fine line and it's taken me so many years to find that neutral balance where I just think, oh, I'm not going to feel under pressure or feel stressed because you can. There's 29 million people in Mumbai and 45 million in Delhi. It's not somewhere that you just turn up without a plan. Even if those shows that, and those shows are great to go to, but again, we get overstimulated and how do you define who do you want to work with? I wouldn't even know how to guess that now because Mm. there are so many options so yeah. we're narrowing it down and doing real business, doing real connection and face-to-face with people that we are happy to spend time with. Yeah. So what you're mentioning there, Emma, is the trade shows. So, of course, you know, if anyone here in Australia has been to the Global Sourcing Expo, the one that's held here in Melbourne or one in Sydney, you'll have had a, a little taste of what a sourcing expo looks like. And here in Australia, there's t- generally three to 400 exhibitors in India, there's thousands of exhibitors. Thousands. So you land at this expo and yeah, there's it's amazing. It's quite overwhelming. But then what do you come away with and how do you validate those potential supply chain partners? I think that's right. a big piece here. It's the validation of the credibility of who you're about to do business with on the other side of the world. And if no right. one is brokering that, then there's some high risk that can come with it. But when you have a trustworthy um, partner on the ground who's already taken all of that hard work and the risk out of it, then that is absolute gold. And I've been calling it a plug and play solution. It's like, get over there, meet these amazing people, start to do business. And that just doesn't happen. That typically doesn't happen without years and years of experience. And, you know, we've we've spoken about doing business in America and how many years, you know, that has taken you know, yourself and many others in the Australian fashion industry. It just, it it takes a long time to build those relationships. It does, Liz. And it's also becoming, um, like, I think I was one of the first ones, as I was saying last year, to leave Australia with my one suitcase to start again. And when I arrived here, I was the only expat in that beautiful hotel that I told you about at a boat. And so the last year has definitely put me even in a different perspective from having an expat that may took that risk again and invested in the country. Yeah, yeah. There's been another elevation to the relationship. There's Mm. been another elevation of trust. And I can say things now that I probably wouldn't have been able to say 
12 years ago, 15 years ago when I was first starting out. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like that front row seat. You've got firsthand experience. You can't read that in a report or a blog or an no, article. No. Um, and you've, you've seen, as you've said, you've witnessed the evolution and the changes of the way business is being done on the ground. And we've all heard the word pivot and be agile and be flexible over the last couple of years. And the same goes when, you know, you're it doing does. international trade, you've got to be really quick on your feet. So you're able to report that information, share that information back to your sourcing trip clients and ensure that they know exactly what's going on at any given Correct. time when it comes to doing business in India. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, Correct. incredible. Um, another thing, traveling with like-minded people and business owners as well. I know you're very passionate about entrepreneurship, Emma. What did you see play out last year with this dynamic group of, you know, business women? And it's not just, this is not just open to women. This is open to everybody, but just happened to be a group of women last September. What did you see play out in terms of the entrepreneurship spirit that came through? Yeah. I mean, the the best part was the, sh- the story sharing. Mm. I, I think that all of them were at different stages of their business and all of them had a different brand story, which was that, that was beautiful to hear. So they, to see people, to see women and business owners have their five minutes of talking about their business, how it evolved, where they want to take it, dreams that mm. were coming to fruition in front of our eyes. Yep. For me, that is the best give back. Mm. And for women in business, um, and I'm not somebody that sits inside four walls. I believe the truth is on the street mm-hmm. and getting women together or girls together, as I like to put it, we are all girls <laughs> at heart. Yeah. <laughs> and we can still have fun. Uh, what, what better, what more fun, and what more, you know, you can't get more laughs in that type yeah. of room. So there was creativity, there was empowerment, there was telling your story, sharing it truthfully, uh, showing your struggles being vulnerable, having a solution, roundtable discussions every night, wine and cheese to say, what did we learn? Where are we going tomorrow? I think that was one of our biggest ones. Every day we needed to share what was it because so much was happening. There was travel time, people were tired, and then there was inspiration from each other. Yeah. So I, for me it was something that, you, and the stop start of it was, you know, afterwards it would be nice to then now have this continuous how well, which I know you do with them, uh, yeah. within your mentoring group of how they're going and what's the, where they're tracking. It's, and it's never a straight line. It is always something else will divert us. But to be able to take yourself out of your normal day-to-day situation and put yourself into something that is so uncomfortable and get through it, you feel stronger when you go home. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, just being able to sit back now and still watch yeah. those relationships yeah. in play, the WhatsApp group that we started back in, I don't know, a month before oh. the trip last year is still, is still live and the ladies are still in there, still sharing where they're at and we're actually catching up in Sydney soon. So it's just so oh. great to see the whole dynamic, you know, those ongoing relationships and support of each other's businesses because it can yeah. kind of be a lonely journey, especially if you're a solo preneur you know some of us might have a team around us some may not just yet so that was just so special to see that magic happen and yeah those probably those relationships will be you know a lifetime so yeah very very unique dynamic so Emma this next trip who is it suited to yeah well we are open to all conversations of course aren't we we are here to open the door and uh, we are looking for businesses that, number one, know their brand, know their audience, have a clear creative direction, uh, understand systems. And again, don't feel overwhelmed. We're here to help you. Under- a lot, get your ideas down on paper, I think, is important because when the face-to-face happens, you do need a show and tell, very good presentation with colours and pictures and design packs ready to go, spec sheets ready to go, and that will be included in the pre-trip preparation list. Uh, Profitable business, of course. You're going to be investing in your future, as we all do. We set aside money to revamp our website, revamp our uh, systems. This is about revamping your business supply chain 
and and heading into the future and where that's going to take you value for money. Uh, being able to leave your team, uh, you know, to physically be out of the office for at least a week to 10 days if you want to add on more. And um, businesses that are ready to grow, open-minded, ready to grow, looking for something new, looking for new inspiration as we all are. I, yeah. Uh, you know, I live in India most of my time, but I just went to Morocco, for example, because India can be like reading the same book every time. You know, I needed to see something else. So this will also give you that uh, something else. Yeah. And yeah, easy to get along with as we are. So, you know, fun yeah. to travel with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'll help you. Like if you're not sure, so if you're tuning in right now and you're thinking, is this trip for me or isn't it? You know, definitely submit your expression of interest and Emma and I will help you make the decision on whether you're ready or your business is ready to make this investment. You know, sometimes we might look at an application and say, oh, actually, this business could be 12 months away from being ready for India. And we can give you some tips on how to get source ready to actually start to do Correct. business um, in, in the country. So, yeah, definitely reach out and express your interest if you're hearing something here that definitely sparks, you know, uh, an idea or an opportunity for your business. So we're talking about brands, we're talking about wholesalers, we're talking about retailers or a combination of all of the above. Um, Emma, this particular question comes up all the time and it is so relevant for our industry right now. Can you highlight the sustainable supply chain solutions that India offers? So from my knowledge, you know, being there on the ground myself um, last year and being able to visit all of the factories and the manufacturers sitting in their showrooms, looking at their production methods. You know, we looked at working with artisans and the craftsmanship side, but there's also the high end, you know, larger scale manufacturing. Is there anything you can share with our listeners just to help them kind of get their head around the sustainability or responsible fashion business journey that they could embark on when doing business in India? Yeah, I mean, it's such a big topic, Liz, and I'm very conscious of it with regards to uh, the the supply chain, like who who is doing the work. So sustainability in everybody has been paid well and everybody lives well. Yeah. Uh, the factories are well kept. Uh, the staff are well looked after. Uh, they get adequate breaks and so forth. So the sustainability of the factory is number one. Uh, the cloth that they access India is now one of the well is probably the fastest uh, growing country with organic uh, cotton mm -hmm. and they are getting certified for that and also the techniques so yeah. there's there's techniques that would die if we weren't here doing uh, you know clothing and textile sourcing mm -hmm. uh, and that is also important so for example remember when we went out to um, that region just outside of Jaipur yep. and they needed to have our business so that this cloth continued and the technique continued so there's the handicraft the craftsmanship combined with the organics uh, the all, all of the right um, stamps that they are getting and I know there's a full list and we can definitely go into those details if someone specifically needed a certification we can get that for you uh, that that type of cloth, and then also that the the factory isn't struggling. So there's there's these three pillars uh, that are holistic in the way that we approach these um, production houses. Yeah, and yeah. Uh and what I would say to our listeners is come, you know, when you fill out an expression of interest, Emma and I will be in touch to organise a Zoom call. So we'll be chatting to you very much um, customised to your business and your goals. And we would invite you to come with your plan in hand. So whether that's your responsible business journey, your conscious fashion blueprint, whether you have a sustainability policy, an impact um, policy, whatever it is, come to the session with your requirements for your business. Because as Emma has rightly said, you know, sustainability is quite a broad term. What is truly sustainable? Emma's spoken about some of the very, very important elements of doing business. It doesn't matter whether it's offshore or locally. 
but certainly ensuring that the people um, that are involved in supply chain are well and truly looked after. There is a planet element of what we are all, you know, here to look after as custodians of this world that we're living in. And then also the product, you know, what goes into the product, ensuring that there's no harmful chemicals, making sure that the base cloths have been chosen very consciously, all of those things. And the techniques that Emma has mentioned, there is some techniques that you can only access in India. And some of those, as Emma has rightly said, are, you know, are really at risk of not being around for many years to come unless we support those industries um, in those countries, in the villages you know, in India that we saw firsthand um, that need our business to actually survive. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your definition of sustainability, but we certainly invite the conversation so that we can ensure that this supply chain is going to be the right solution for your business based on your needs. Correct. Now, Emma, how does this trip differ to, say, a typical, you know, sourcing agent model? This is a bestoke, uh, I mean, we have customised this trip uh, to a point where it's based on our, all of our years of value. Yeah. Uh, we care about the people that are coming on board. We care about the outcome. It's not a, uh, like, it's not like a, a computerised matchmaking, um, I open it up to the world we've done all of that thought for you. So it's very bespoke. It's very fine-tuned. Uh, you've got two um, well-established business owners that have been, have you know, gone through a lot of experience yeah. and it's hand-holding at the same time. So yeah. I, I believe you would feel so well looked after here that the outcome will only be positive mm. and yeah I would add to that because I've worked with typical sourcing agents, you know, my entire career and they do an amazing job, but it's a very different experience to what Emma is offering here. As she said, it's customized. So it's customized for you and your business. And because we've been through this recently with other brands, we know that it's already a proven model. So the potential for you to go over there and start to do business, that's actually real. Where when you start to work with a sourcing agent, it's quite a long process because they're going to put a portfolio of manufacturers to you. Then you've got to test. You've got to test that supply chain. Perhaps they haven't worked with that manufacturer before. You know, they've brought them on. They're new to the portfolio. With what you're gaining access to here, proven models, long-term relationship, um, plug and play is how I'm articulating it. So I think that that yeah. really takes, that could take months, if not years out of the process. So I think that that's truly the point of difference to a typical sourcing model, the way that I've experienced it over my journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emma, what's the investment in the trip? But more importantly, what will the ROI be for those who participate? Oh, this, I mean, this, okay, so we're, we we changed, like we changed the upfront fee now. Uh, it's to get the ball rolling. Yeah. And prior to that, there'll be about a month's work that we will do uh, with the participants. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you prepped, ready to go. And there'll be step-by-step -step guidance on what the expectation will be. And if we'll, we'll lead you down the path of, having a positive outcome. So that will take at least six weeks prior to the landing date. Uh, the ROI can be saving money on costs, saving money on samples that didn't work. Uh, you know your sampling budget is huge. If you can narrow that down to have the best samples possible, you will save yourself oh, at least 10 times what this is going to cost you. Uh, yeah. Trusted production from sampling, salesman sample to production is guaranteed. Uh, we know that they will be exactly as you've sampled, timely production as well. So lot, no loss of launch dates, no loss of um, not getting the right product at the end. Uh, all of this is, it can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So it's it's minor. To get this going is a minor investment, I would say, for where you're going to grow personally, how your business is going to grow, 
the value for money at the end of the day of how far your dollar can go in India yeah. and also having uh, the experience of being able to decide, okay, is this what, what does the sample cost and production and be able to figure that out while you're here? not yeah. at a later date. Yeah. It, we all get carried away and want all the bells and whistles and then the production cost is way too high and well, we shouldn't have made that sample as it was. So a lot of these things we are going to isolate and be able to address immediately on the first 20, 48 hours. Yeah, absolutely love it. So just for our listeners, just to let you know, so your investment will include all of the prep work in the lead up to the trip. It's going to include Emma's hosting you, holding your hand on the ground in India of all of the connections that she has mentioned. And of course, there'll be some post-trip follow-up. So once you express your interest, fill out that form that I'll pop into the show notes and you can access on the Fashion Equip website. Um, we'll make sure that we send you all of the information in terms of what the investment will be based on what you want to achieve on this trip um, and how deep we need to go with you during the prep and the post-trip follow-up as well. So very much customised to your needs. So Emma, to wrap up, this time flies when you're having fun. It is, does, Liz. Oh, we I, get so excited about I it all. <laughs> I know. Is there anything else that you want to share just to kind of finish off, just to, um, yeah, anything we haven't covered or anything that you want to kind of re reiterate before um, we jump off? I look, I think for me it's just such a positive uh, opportunity. I think I just feel that this timing is ideal. Uh you know, it, India in itself is on a huge growth trajectory. Uh, things will change in a year's time. I think with fashion, it's changing so fast now with online, the space, um, staying ahead of the curve, staying original. There's so many things now that we have to consider to cut through. And you will find that here. So yeah. I, we're, we're passionate about it. We want to take a small group that is ready to go energetic and no hesitations and we will continue offering that so if you miss out this year there'll be another one for sure this is something that we are doing to give back to the Australian um, industry and uh, and here it's just an, it, here is all positive it, I mean this is this country is literally on fire and it's amazing to watch it I, I'm just a small little drop in the ocean I feel very grateful that I'm respected as a businesswoman over here mm. uh, that's taken many many years yeah. and a lot of a, a lot of learnings and a lot and losses yeah. and um we'll avoid that for you we, we will give you your shoulder pads to stand up strong <laughs> and, cut, and cut through <laughs> because it is a different pads. world it is a different world over here and um yeah I've got the energy to to share it so uh let, let's get going is what I yeah. say yeah uh, amazing. I would just say to everyone, look, with Emma's expertise and passion for doing business, as I'm sure you can feel and hear right now, her passion for doing business in India combined with my consulting and guidance, you know, in the lead up to the trip and post trip. Look, this experience, it promises to open doors, to elevate your yeah. business and to forge lasting connections. So we both invite all of our listeners who are interested in joining this transformative journey to express their interest and take advantage of this unique chance to tap into India's rich sourcing landscape. I've been calling this India Unlocked. <laughs> that's yes, my, that's my headline it. for this podcast. Um, it's immediate it. access to a dynamic supply chain ecosystem. So if the timing is right for you to do business in India or explore doing business in India, you know, for the, the time that's to come over, you know, 2024, 2025, now's the time to set the foundation uh, in this amazing country. So limited places are available. I'll be putting all of the details in the show notes. I also invite our listeners to come and join me at the Global Sourcing Expo in Sydney in July. I'll pop all of the details in the show notes. I'll be doing a presentation called The Conscious Fashion Blueprint. And I'll also be there to answer any questions that you have about joining Emma on this amazing trip in India in September. So definitely come visit, say hello, and yeah, I'd love to meet you all in person. So Emma, thank you for being so generous with your time and your knowledge today. Um, who wouldn't want to spend time with you in India in September? 
I hope I, I, that's, I'm looking for friends. So come on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. Okay. Thanks, Liz.